I love a good productivity app that just driving the business forward <laughs> by either making my life easier or more organized. And after trying many different apps, and still kind of am honestly, I have come up with my top five must have productivity apps. The apps that I must have on my computer. And one of those being Tick Tick. So Tick Tick is my to-do app. I have tried reminders, I have tried notes, I have tried Microsoft to-do. I have tried so many different apps and each one taught me further of what I needed. And that was basically everything in which this application does. So something that I learned that I need is a place to dump things that I need to do. So what Tick Tick has for me is an inbox, which is where I jot those things down. And then from there, I'll assign them to a day. And what I found works really good for me is to actually time block things. So I'll come in here and I like to look at the week view and I'll just grab the things that are on my to-do list and actually plot them out at the time of day that I plan to do it. Because what I found is that I will start the day with this huge task list. Like I'm trying to conquer the world. And I'll give myself like maybe a 15 to 30 minute buffer in between each task so that I can have time to move from one to the other. And the other thing that Tick Tick does that I like is that it syncs with my calendar app. Because what I was finding with my other to-do apps is that I would have redundancy. Like I'll put it in both places and it just became like, I don't know, a little bit confusing. So the tab that I come to pretty much at the start of every day is my today view. And that lets me see what I have on the day that I need to accomplish. And and it also has another area that's very important for me and that's the overdue section. In the past, if I didn't complete something, I found out that I had to re-add it to the next day. With the overdue section here, it automatically goes there if it doesn't get completed. So that as I'm planning out my day, I can also go look at what I didn't get a chance to accomplish and possibly accomplish it today. Now, something that I could do that I tried and I don't do <laughs> is the list and tag option. So when I was making my list, I decided to make one for my finance related things, things that I needed to follow up on. And then I made my tags, which was like a further refined section of that. But I found that it felt like I was doing more work on the front end when I was trying to just do a quick brain dump or something that I needed to complete. Adding those different elements per task just felt like so I started it, didn't finish it, but I will say, if you do opt to utilize that aspect, what I found is that the stats that it gives you in terms of how productive you've been, that type of information is really useful so that you can see, hey, this is how much time I spend on personal related things or work related things. But another thing I can track are my habits and I can enable it so that I see this on my today view of my task so that my habits are always central focus. And the other thing that it has in here that I don't always utilize, but I utilize what it does is this promo timer which is basically focus sprints so i'm the type that i'll set a timer typically on like my google speaker or my phone or something for 30 minutes to maybe an hour and i will work during that time no distractions and then take a 15 to 30 minute break and resume my work i found that gives me more of a sense of balance and allows me to work better but the other thing that really sold me with tick tick is the fact that it is offered on multiple platforms and me being a tech girly i am constantly jumping between different platforms and what i found with the other apps is that it might work for one but not all where this one works with my iPhone, my MacBook, my iPad, my Android, my Windows. That's Tick Tick in a nutshell. Now this next one, fantastic out. I have used this for years, y'all. I mean, uh, it's been in pretty much all of my what's on my iPhone videos. So Fantastic How is my go-to calendar app and I have tried other calendar applications, but this one has just set the bar. First thing that honestly grabbed me with it is the fact that I can see the color of my calendar when I'm looking at my monthly view of events. I color coordinate my calendars. My personal calendar is a certain color. My work calendar is a certain color. I'm able to look at this and get like a quick overview of the work and personal related tasks that I have per day. That's honestly what what drove me to look for another calendar app because with the default calendar app, all of the dots are gray. Even if they're a certain color, they're gray when you look at the monthly view. And it just made everything kind of blend in, you know? Where with this, things stand out more. But my calendar, my calendar keeps me together. I am a e-calendar person. If it ain't up here, I'm probably possibly gonna forget. I'm curious, are you the type that likes a e-calendar or are you the traditional paper and pencil? Let me know down below in the comments because I'm curious which 
out which way people lean the most. Another thing I like that I can do is hide my calendars. So sometimes there's certain things that I wanna remember for a specific day, but I don't wanna see it. It's more like maybe an archive or when I want to see it, I can see it. Another thing that I personally do is sometimes I will add an event to multiple calendars. And with the other calendar apps, they typically show them as, you know, two separate events on that day. Whereas with this, it won't, you know, have that same type of duplication. Instead, it'll combine the title of it. And the way that you know that it's on two different calendars is the color of the dot. It will reference both calendars. Another thing that I found myself using a lot at one point were calendar groups or calendar filters. So I know for me, sometimes I just wanna see my work-related calendars. I can just do that with one click here, or I can click here and see all of my personal related calendars. And I like that because then I don't have to come in here and manually turn off each individual calendar. But yeah, I wanna say those are the main things that I use here. Notion. Notion has gotten my life together. Like, it's one of those apps that I heard a lot of hype around and it's, it's, it's for a reason. I've tried a lot of different project management applications because that's kind of what I use and see this one being for me. But it's just like a dumb zone for everything. At first I was just using it for work and then I realized we got something here. Now I know I've referenced in a previous video that I would show my setup, so this is it. Ultimately in here on my left hand side, I have my favorites at the very top so that I can quickly access those without having to dig into each individual page. And one of those being my orders page. So this is where I like to go and put the items that I have ordered and should be on the way. Because what I found is that I do use a parcel tracking app, like I use deliveries, but I need the tracking number to put the item in there. Now granted, I could probably add it without the tracking number, but this is what I do instead. So what I have here is a table in which I will put the item in, the status in terms of where it is, if it's ordered, the cost of it, the card that I use, the date that I ordered it and the tag would be the place in which I got it from. But I like that I can come in here and actually click on the item and see specific things about it. So what I've done in the past is like the things that I bought from a specific website, I would take a screenshot of it and put it in here so that I can see the exact items, especially if I'm shopping for like clothes or shoes or something and I buy a lot of different things, it's nice to see what items were in that order. Now what I did before this is like save things in Finder, notes, it was just scattered throughout different places, but now it's all centralized. But the next page I have after that is my Tech Me Out HQ. This is like the landing page for my business. And what I found in using Notion is aesthetics matter. They make a difference in terms of the overall flow. Because before I learned a certain trick, I was definitely the type to just put the information in, I might change the color of the heading, highlight the text a little bit, but that's where we stop. However, now we got a little theme going. So what I have on my left side is the legend. So I have quick access to a page in here that I have all my YouTube videos on, my shorts, my calendar, my analytics. And then beneath that, I have a widget for a clock, which is very sometime, and half the time the thing does not wanna work. And then in the middle, I have my content calendar. So this is where I see all of the YouTube and short form content that needs to go live. And then to the right of that, I have quick links. So these allow me to quickly access my different social pages or different websites that I use a lot. And beneath that, I have a quote, which updates every so often. And then beneath all of that, I have another calendar. So my goal here was the top calendar would show me everything and the bottom calendar would allow me to have specific views. But I can see just my YouTube videos going live or my short form content going live all within there. But the page I'm gonna take you to real quick is my YouTube page, just to kind of show you how I do things in here. So typically what I do is when I have an idea for a video, I put it here and I at least get the thought out. And I make sure then I come here and change the status to idea. Now, if it's something that I plan to do really soon, then I might put it up next. And then I have the other categories here as well so that I know where I am in the actual creation process. Then next to that, I have my live date because it keeps me on track of what needs to be filmed because sometimes I get in my little creative bag and I start filming what I feel like filming versus what needs to be done by a certain time. So this keeps me on track. And then to the right of that, I have the platform that it's gonna be on. Now, if I say that it's gonna be on YouTube, YouTube and Instagram, it then also appears under the all short form view here so that I don't have to make two separate pages, you know, one for YouTube and one for IG. I have one here, for example, for my everyday carry. If I choose it here under all short form, it opens the same page as it would 
if I was under my YouTube view. Now, one thing that I found really useful for me was templates. So for example, I tend to create a top apps video and I follow a format. So what I've done is I've come in here and I wrote out the things that I typically do in my tips and tricks video so that I don't always have to create that look every single time. Like I'll have my shot list in here, my title ideas, my checklist for the things that I need to do for the video. Before my template, I would literally go into the previous video I did, copy it and paste it and replace everything. This saves all of that headache and makes it so much more easier. So I really love that about Notion. Moving on, another page that I have in here is my subscriptions page. So in here, I have all of my subscriptions. I have the price, the renewal date, how often I pay it in terms of if it's monthly or annually, the card that I use and the category in terms of if it's a business thing or a personal thing. Now, I know I could use something like Excel or Microsoft Word or even my notes app, but the thing that made Notion different for me is that I can come in here and open up something like, you know, my Netflix subscription here and it'll create a page for it. And I can jot down specific things about my Netflix account that I wanna remember. I can put that here and not have to store it in multiple places. Now, I also have a page for my financials, but I'm still building that out. But ultimately, I want a landing place to kind of jot down anything in reference to that. The same thing for my house, because before it is, again, similar to the other ones, I was using different apps like Notes to jot down things to remember, photos for pictures, HOA things were in Finder, like stuff is just scattered. So this lets me take those individual files and place them all in one place. And then I have a medical page as well, still building that out also, but all of my medical information will live here. Same for my travel information. So I travel a lot and I found that, you know, I want to be able to remember the airports that I like, the hotels that I like, just different things about trips. And it's also where I will sometimes like plan or plot out a trip. Like when I'm searching for flights and I'm comparing them, I'll utilize Notion to kind of have a place to dump that information. I also have a page for all of my sponsors so that I can keep track of specific things per campaign. So when you're working with different brands, there are a lot of moving pieces from contracts to different things that you have to ensure are done to information or documents that are shared. So what I'll do is when I have a sponsor is I'll come and make a page for them and I'll put all of that information here. I even will make a to-do list sometimes in there so that I can make sure the things that need to be completed for that campaign are done. Another page I have in here would be for my goals. I'm still working on that one as well. Ultimately, I wanted a simple setup in there, a place to kind of track what I want to do and where I'm at with it. I also have a page for different meetings that I have. A thing that I will do is use both and then cross-reference, but ultimately I want everything to live here in Notion. Now this next one is one that I get on my Mac real quick, fast, in a hurry, and that is Better Snap Tool. What it does is let you snap your windows to specific areas on screen, and I know that, you know, the Mac can natively do that, but I've been using Better Snap Tool for so long, it just makes sense for me. And it also has like little customization features that make it even more unique. I use it kind of in its most simplest state. <laughs> and that's to have the option to take one window and drag it over here to the left, and take another window and drag it over here to the right and it snaps into that position. But there was a time where I was using a more advanced feature of this app, which is known as snap areas. So what that does is let you define a space on screen so that every time you drag a window to that area, it automatically snaps into that size. You can also use shortcut keys to make it automatically snap to an area. But this one right here, absolute must be. Now this next one is more about productivity in the sense of mental health as well. It's hard to create when your mind is not in the best state for you to do so. Day One is a journaling app that I have used for years. Like I know Apple has their own journal app. It's the features in which Day One offers that just has me still using it over that. One of those things being the encryption. It's an end-to-end -end encryption, so everything is nice and secure. I also like the different options in which I can make a journal entry. So like I can leave a voice entry, a video entry. It can even recognize the location that I'm at and put that in there. I like that about it because I'll go back and look at old journal entries sometimes and I'll see where I was like physically, like the location that it tagged and it's like, wow, man, you know, it's, it's nice to see your growth and it's nice to have a place to, to kind of get your thoughts out. And I was the type that thought like I had to write an essay when I journal, like I need paragraphs, you know, I gotta get thoughts out. 
But it's really about just taking a moment, a second to just kind of debrief with yourself in a sense. And if you can't think of what to write, it even offers different like subjects. So it can give you some ideas to kind of get your, your wheels turning of things to write about. Oh, another thing that I found really cute and interesting, if it notices that you journaled on that same day years ago, it will show you what you wrote. And it's really interesting to kind of like, kind of gauge and see like, hey, am I in the same mental space that I was then? I can also add photos to my journal entries, which I've even done. And I can link my social media to it as well so that it can see what I posted on that day and automatically associate that with my journal entry. Another thing I use in the app are tags. I like to tag different journal entries with the mood that I had. So I can go in and click on that specific mood and see the different entries that are related to it. And day one is one of those apps that is offered on different platforms. So it's available on iOS, Android, and Mac. Another thing that I like that I use in there is the option to create different journals. I have a journal for personal related things, business related things. But with this option, I'm able to like better group similar entries so that each one is like its own notebook, so to speak. Day one has definitely been around since day one for me. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and that these apps are just as useful to you as they have been for me. And if you have any apps that you wanna recommend, you know, feel free to drop them down below. But until the next one, y'all, which will be next Saturday because we're back on the weekly uploads. Lock in, hit that subscribe button. But until then, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.